Ooh, heavy. What's going on everybody? My name is Cam and today's video is for any of you that have been considering getting into the t-shirt business but you don't know where to start. I'm gonna help you out by reviewing two of the most affordable press options that I could find on the internet. This blue press behind me or this homemade press using nothing more than $10 jiffy clamps and $15 worth of wood. Let's, uh, let's tackle it, huh? All right, to kick this video off, we need to assemble both of the presses. And I'm gonna start with the, the press that I got off of Amazon. It was under 200 bucks. I can't remember exactly, but let's start assembling that one. Dude, this thing takes forever to assemble. There are some clear quality control issues. Forgot to drill this hole. Oh, uh -huh. All right, and now that the blue press is assembled, we're going to start putting together and building the even cheaper press, which I was able to assemble for like 30 bucks. I thought I had some raw, oh shit. I thought I had some uh, just raw materials to make like a shirt palette, but I don't. So I'm uh, on Home Depot. Home Depot bound. There's our piece of, uh, I don't know what it's called, Formica. Unfortunately, I had to pay an extra $17. They're almost $18 to buy that. Uh, you're just gonna need a few items. A uh, 25 by 25 piece of Formica does not need to be laminated. Uh, a two by four, I just have a scrap one here. It's all beat to crap, but it'll work. Drill screws, your jiffy clamps, two of them, 10 bucks on Amazon, and like a tape measure or preferably a T-square to get straighter cuts. So we're gonna cut it down widthwise to 14 inches. You can go wider if you want to, it's completely up to you. <laughs> to get another uh, board just because uh, I didn't really think this through. I'm figuring it out as I go. Just imagine we're gonna make two feet, kind of like a double cross here and about right here. Cut both of these legs at 16 inches. And I'm gonna cut the pallet arm at 33. Pallet, gap for the shirt with the jiffy hinges mounted to that so that it's getting the same height. The next thing I'm doing here is uh, throwing some pallet tape on. It's not necessary, but I, I would recommend it. Gotta get our films printed out and then we'll burn the screens and then we're gonna get uh, to testing these presses out. This new graphic I've been working on here. I'm gonna use my cheap exposure unit. Uh, I got a link in the description of this video to show you guys how you don't need equipment like this to burn screens. So click the video, watch that as well, but finish this video first. I've heard a lot of y'all in the comments saying that you have overcast days all the time so that the sun thing won't work for you. Well, I just exposed it 15 seconds on an overcast day in the sun. You don't have to use air, but if you got it, it helps. Or you can just use a paper towel or newsprint to, to dry it before you send it out to post expose. To, God damn it. Fuck. All right, first press on the agenda is our homemade under $30 press. Screen. And these clamps, dude, it's just so easy to do. And I'm just lining up my registration marks to the vertical line that I drew on the pallet. Get these nice and stable and you clamp her down. Because of the height of the hinges, we'll give you about an eighth of an inch off contact, which is in most cases all you need. I am also gonna just put a little quarter right here on the end just to raise this, the front of the screen up a little bit. Damn. Does anyone even have change anymore? You got a quarter? Give me a quarter. 
Gigi, give me a quarter. Thanks, though. Not a quarter, but we got two pennies. That'll do it. So I'm just gonna tape my two pennies right there. More off contact, you can add a penny. If you need less, you can remove a penny. Because we're printing white on black, a little more off contact is better. And the next thing I'm gonna do is apply some pallet adhesive. Now we use this water-based uh, spread on stuff. Another option you have is this spray adhesive. You can get it from any local print supplier. We don't use this stuff very much anymore. It's because as you spray it, you get it on your arms, it gets on your press, it gets on the floor, but you just lightly missed it, just like that. This is specific tape for the industry, but just clear packing tape works fine. And I'm gonna use that to tape off the top reg marks. And the bottom reg marks. We're gonna tape inside the screen. Now we've created a dam around it. Got my little clip here. I'm putting this on the top of the screen here just so that my squeegee has something to lean against. If I don't do that, because I'm letting this thing go straight up, the squeegee's gonna fall out. When the clamp is there, after I'm done with my print, I can lean it back, squeegee stays put, I can bring it back to me. Ideally, you want two of these, but I only have one. Okay, let's throw a little ink in our screen here. We'll always load it up at the bottom. Put a good layer in there. I remember when I first started, I was real greedy with the ink, and it would cause me all kinds of problems with the print. So put a good chunk of ink in there. So we're inked up. I'm gonna load my squeegee into the thing, lift it, and we're gonna load our first shirt. This is just some scrap shit I have laying around. So I'm gonna do it on the back, load it up, Lower her down. Okay. Yeah, that looks real good. It's crispy. And that was the whole point of this video is just to show you that even with something that costs 30 bucks or less than 30 bucks, you can still get a good, clean, single color print. Now, in this case, I wanna make the white a little bit brighter. So we're gonna do a print flash print. And here how you, here's how you'll do that with a, uh, I think these things cost like 50 bucks. This is a heat gun. It's like an extra hot blow dryer or hair dryer. It takes forever, but it is a solution. You can get a quick cure on your ink. And I'm just slowly going over the graphic. Now this wouldn't be ideal if you're trying to do production, anything over 12 pieces, it's gonna to get too slow. Just an overlapping motion. And once I get pretty close to where I want it, I'm just gonna test it with my finger. We still got a ways to go. So using this thing takes forever, but it'll get it done. And especially if you're just kinda testing this whole thing out and you're seeing if you wanna get involved in screen printing, cheap press, heat gun, it'll get the job done. Now on a production level, I wouldn't wanna do more than 12 shirts, maybe 24 if I had a lot of extra time with this, but you could get started doing 12 piece orders, single color with this, and you could produce just as professional as a, of a print as you could off of a, like a, a full production printing press. And the ink that I'm using is, Ex, um, what is this, Excalibur. This stuff's nice, man. I think Excalibur might just be my favorite Plastisol ink. One pass should be good enough. There it is, printed on that little cheap $30 screen print and press, cured with the heat gun, uh, and it's a clean print. However, trying to cure it with that heat gun is a little tricky. So this next thing you can get pretty much on any used screen printing site and find yourself a flash dryer. Not only will a flash dryer cure your shirt, you can also swing it over the pallet uh, to flash in between colors when you're trying to make it uh, extra bright. After you've done a few prints with this and you've decided that, you're, that this is cool and that you're really into it, I would say the next thing you need to look into is a flash dryer. Now that we have finished our sample of this first super cheap, all, almost free screen printing press, let's look into the slightly more expensive four color unit I got off, got off Amazon for like 100, 100 something bucks. Owie. Clamp it or secure it down to the surface that you're printing on with it. I'm just gonna use this clamp clamp it down like that so it holds steady looking good adjust your off contact so you just loosen the print heads like this i mean this is so fucking janky dude i don't even it's cumbersome man i already don't like it as much as that little cheap one if you don't have like basic mechanical skills this press is going to drive you bonkers 
The off contact adjusted to this first head. I still need to do some fine tuning with these registration gates, but we'll do that later. Let's see if I can get this screen in a place where we can at least do a print with it. So getting the heads leveled and all that stuff, it's not that bad. However, if you're new to printing and you don't really understand or grasp what you're doing and why you're doing it, I can, I can imagine going back to when I was first starting how this would be uh, sort of frustrating. But it's not bad. I'm, I'm gonna admit it. I thought that I was gonna be more like funky about it, but it is pretty cool. You're just gonna need to do more fine tuning with it. You're gonna have to spend more time with your wrenches and all of this stuff getting this thing to a place where it can print, okay? Now, let's load up a shirt. The pallet is gigantic. Wait, it's, it's too big. There's no reason to have a pallet this big. It's just unex it's ridiculous. I gotta tell you something, man. I've never used this ink before, but Excalibur White, Mwah. Nice, slow, even pull. First one clears the ink. Second one, I'm just making sure to get good penetration on the garment. And you can tell if you got a good pull, the screen has nice soft contact, so it pulls free of the ink and you won't see any little pinhole dots of white ink residue left over inside the mesh. And this is a 110 mesh, by the way. So let's pull the print head up and see what we got as far as our print quality. It looks good. I still need to patch this pinhole right here. That's a clean print too. I'm gonna do a little flashy flash and we're gonna do a second pass because I, I know for a fact we're gonna get ghosting because these bearings aren't tight enough. So we're just doing a pull, one clean pull. And let's see what happens. Because I didn't squeeze these down tight enough against this right here, the screen is able to move slightly from side to side when I re-index it. The little distress marks did close up because the screen shifted slightly. And that's the ultimate question with this press is, you know, it's 100 and 120 bucks. You're gonna have a hard time getting multicolor jobs registered on it to begin with. So is it really worth is picking this up as compared to the other one. This thing is probably gonna be slightly overwhelming for the new printer. They both have their place. I think if you wanted to have multiple single color graphics up and kind of registered and ready to print, like if you have a t-shirt business online and you wanted to just be able to print them as the orders come in, I think that this might be a better solution. The beginner who's just starting out, this is the simpler, easier to understand solution. So I'm saying go with the $30 press. If you wanna go with this one, link in the description, buy it through my thing, you're, you'll help me out a little bit, a little, little something, something. Also, if you decide to go with these Jiffy clamps, link in the description of this video. Actually, it's a link to my Amazon store that's on the printlife.com, but in the next video, I will be doing a, a test run to see if I can actually get a multicolor job registered on that press. Oof, it's gonna be a, I can already tell just by how finicky the thing is, it's gonna be tough, but we can do it. <laughs>